Wait, what about a heat map? Doesn't everyone use a heat map to show risks? Have no fear. We can represent our qualitative risk model as a heat map too. There are some limitations to a heat map that we will discuss later, but heat maps are useful for certain situations. A heat map typically looks like a grid, although there are different representations. A number of boxes should correspond to our qualitative model. We have columns and rows for each increment of our scale. Yes, we have intentionally omitted zero, even though it is in our scale. A heat map can grow to accommodate larger scales. Now we fill in the grid to make it visually arresting. Most risk heat maps come with a variation of this color scheme. It is important not to color specific boxes without first setting your risk tolerance policy. Green boxes, for example, here communicate that those risks are acceptable, meaning that we do not have to take action to manage them. We will discuss risk tolerance or risk criteria later. We can then show the number of rated risks in each segment of the heat map. These numbers do not include unrated risks, unidentified risks, or risks with unknown likelihood or consequences.